Oh, alrighty then. Here we go. First day in a long time. I hadn't even really thought about what I'm gonna talk about. It's cold, if you can't tell. I got my beanie on, I got my double jackets on. I actually um, was not going I don't normally wear two jackets, but what happened was I had forgotten one of them on my way home from work. I feel like my mic's in a terrible place. I had forgotten one of them on my way home from work, and so in order to not freeze my butt off, this morning when I came to work, I wore a different jacket, and then of course I needed to remember to bring my normal jacket home, so voila, I've got two jackets. I was hoping that it was going to be a little chillier when I leave. Obviously like whether or not the sun's down is a huge factor as to whether or not um, it's too chilly or chilly enough for me. So at any rate, um, that is why I'm wearing two jackets. I'm not that sensitive to the cold weather, although I am more sensitive to the cold weather than I used to be. So like I can remember once upon a time, not too long ago, it's been a couple years, where I could like very easily wear like short sleeves and shorts in like 40 degree weather and I'd be just fine. Like it was, I was not cold, I was not freezing my butt off, I was comfortable. Cause I've always run pretty hot. Like I get hot very easily and I stay, stay hot for a very long period of time. And so I prefer to be cold over being hot for that very reason. And so, at any rate, um, I can remember being 40 degrees, shorts and a t-shirt, I am just fine. And then uh, in 2019, I got sick, and like not like a major like sick, but I just, I, for whatever reason, I remember being sick in 2019 in the early goings of the year, and I could not get warm, like I was cold all the time and like the sickness went away but my sensitivity to cold was never quite as strong as it once was like even still to this day it's been four years now since that happened and still like cold hits me a lot harder than it used to and a lot of people say that it just comes with age and when you're old and decrepit you feel the cold worse than you do the heat and I'm sure that there's some truth to that but I don't think I'm old and decrepit enough to be like oh the cold makes my bones rattle but um, at any rate I get cold and feel cold a lot more sensitively than I used to and so that um, is a thing like I probably wouldn't even be wearing a jacket in it's what 37 degrees outside I might be wearing a jacket today but not normally would I be wearing a jacket or once upon a time I wouldn't be wearing a jacket and now I am because the daggum sickness done took my immunity to cold away that's how one of my gamer friends described it to me he's like you lost your immunity to the cold and I was like I know and I really needed it too it was one of my few natural gifts but that's all right I'll just put on clothes and be a happy little camper and so yeah what happened today like like I said the first, today is the first day where I'm like leaving the office and not thinking of a fun thing to talk about with you guys and just it's nice sometimes to just kind of go with the flow and see where where your words take you and what it is that you're saying you guys can't really see me that well at all can you there is that any better not maybe you don't want to see me maybe you don't want to see me at all but yeah got out of work on time today got a lot of stuff accomplished that always feels good to be able to leave the office feeling like you did something um I knocked out, well not knocked out, I just made several um, significant steps on several projects and that is like honestly been the biggest thing in this new role that I acquired is like the steps to accomplishing things are like massive and not like the steps themselves aren't massive there's a massive amount of steps to accomplishing something and I've been working on this particular project since like September 
and it's like been stuck at like substantial completion now for a very long time but it's just stuck and like I have to just wait for this or wait for that or wait for this or wait for that and honestly that's probably going to be like what drives me insane about this role that I want or that I have is just like the waiting game like everything about this role is like every step of every way that I'm trying to do something or go somewhere I am getting walls thrown up in my way and it's annoying it's like just get out of my way and let me do what I need to do I'm trying to make things better around here but I cannot if you're going to keep throwing up these roadblocks and so that is the biggest um like struggle that I face in this role right now it's just like the amount of times things get thrown up in my way and this is like oh this is this is in your way now and oh this is in your way now and oh this is in your way now and I had mentioned yesterday that I wanted to take this um, voice acting class and like if I'm being honest as much as I love voice acting I never really considered it to be like a serious career path for me but like the more I deal with this stuff the more I'm like well maybe that's maybe Maybe that's the thing that I need to be doing and it's kind of obnoxious because I have so many different creative outlets and so many different things that I'm doing and like I'm just like sitting here practically begging for one of them to go somewhere and to do something like I've been writing for years and just like you'd be real nice if that got some recognition I've been dabbling with um, voice acting and like I said maybe after I take this class I'll have a better direction of like where to go what to do how to get heard how to be seen because like to the same degree like anybody who has like a microphone and a modern like even a mild personality can be a voice actor and like I have a person that I've been working with who does a lot of acting and I apologize if this mic is in terrible positioning or not I can't really tell but I feel like it's hitting my chin which tells me that it's not in great positioning and every time I stop at a stoplight I should really like try and readjust it but I keep just talking to you guys instead but at any rate um, I have an actor that I've been talking to and he keeps complaining about how like the people who get these jobs over him are very simply just like people with more following than he has and like that's kind of the name of the game like the whole benefit Benefit of picking a particular actor is that you can borrow off of their fan base. If they're an established name who've been in some things, then chances are they have some fans and they have some people who, like, no matter what they're doing, I'm going to see what this person's playing in. No matter what they're doing, I'm going to read what this person has written. And so to have those kinds of fans dedicated to you is a powerful thing and it is honestly probably the most powerful thing in this world aside from like money itself but as like an asset it's probably even better than money because it's like guaranteed money without having money because like if I wanted to I don't know film a movie that costs 10 grand I could potentially have 10 grand or I could have a hundred thousand followers and go to a music or go to a movie producer and say hey I've got a hundred thousand followers if you put my name on this film I guarantee they're gonna support it and that movie producer is like "Ooh, this is money this is gonna sell I want it all right let's go and so like in a way like the modern world of like followers as we call them they are like the new most valuable currency in this modern age and the more followers you have the more influence you have the bigger of a footprint you can create on this world and like it's cheesy because there's a lot of people who were big before the internet and like The Rock for example. The Rock is like the biggest person. I think he's still the most popular person on social media right now and I'm trying to move my microphone. Anyway he is the most popular person on social media right now and um, 
he was a huge major popular success before social media really took off and so a lot of those people you've got like them to compete with they've already got a head start on you and then there's just the other people who have just been on the internet forever like Logan Paul's been a thing for a very long time now and he's like a gajillionaire and that's just the unfortunate thing about all of this is like all these people are the same age as me well not okay the rocks not the same age as me but like Logan Paul's the same age as me Mr. Beast is the same age as me and they are doing just incredible things with their lives and they are really succeeding and I am over here floundering trying to find my way and it's like I just don't get it is there something that I'm missing is there some magic thing about social media and how to gain a following and become a thing on social media that I am missing like it just doesn't click for me and like I feel like as a personality like as a person person to person I connect very well with others but something about like the social media connection is just not happening and to a degree like I feel like I do make kind of crap content like I'll go on Instagram and I'll just be like hey this is what I'm doing this week hope you guys have a good day or whatever and I just expect people to care about that and I don't really give them any reason to care outside of the fact that I'm just a person being real and saying what I have to say but like why why care what incentive am I giving these people to care about what I'm saying and who I am and that is the unfortunate reality that I am now working with and that I now find myself in is like I myself can't even like justify making people care about my work and so I don't know it's just it's a whole big thing and I need to remind myself that I've only been like consistently posting on Instagram for just over a year now like it feels like it's been forever but realistically speaking I started the whole consistent thing um, last summer and we haven't had a second well we've had a second summer so it's been a year now but we haven't had another summer to make it two years and so I really just need to remember that and be like dude like it's only been a year these things take time I am in a really good place in life and I keep having to remind myself of that I'm fortunate in the amount of uh, finances that I can throw at these sorts of projects because a lot of people don't have the financial pre freedom that I have to be able to do these sorts of things and so I get it and it's difficult and I it's a time-consuming thing but it's hard not to compare yourself to other people and that is is the other kind of double-edged sword that social media presents like it gives you this unique leverage of people but it also gives you like the perspective of people as well like I can now see all these people who are the same age as me who are doing astronomically better than I am because they stuck with YouTube since the beginning or because they did this for this long or because they did that for this long and like this whole 24 365 thing like feels like a desperate grasp at some of that like trying to gap bridge the gap between the creators um, who have been doing it for a while and myself and like eventually if you record two videos every single day you get good enough at it to where people want to watch and people want to listen and people want to have to know what you have to say and hear what you have to say and that's the goal here that's the hope is trying to figure all that out and just honestly trying to navigate this life and my way towards success and in a way this could be like me documenting my own journey to success like there is so many different paths that one can take and I always say before you even choose a path you need to figure out what success is like what are you aiming to get out of this life and um, at what point in time do you feel like you've gotten that out of it and so like for me financial independence was always the goal and like I wanted to live a life where money had no power over me I wasn't constantly looming in financial despair and I have really have accomplished that right now like I am winning in that regards and so now like what's next for me what is the next step that I need to be accomplishing and that um, 
varies. Like, a lot of people are just like, dude, you're in a good place, you're making decent money, just invest it. Like, invest the money, use the 4% rule, and um, live off of that. And I mean, that's nice. A lot of people are telling me to invest in real estate. That's a legit way to go. And then there's me who wants to invest in my own creative adventures and hope that that can be something that goes somewhere too. But like I've already accomplished goal number one. And so now I need to figure out again, I need to step back and look at the bigger picture, take my own advice and understand like what is the next goal? What is next for me? And that is the uh, current status that I, that I face and what I need to try and figure out for myself. Like if the next goal is to become something creative, then I need to divulge everything I've got into becoming a creative person that people recognize and respect and if the next goal is just making myself that much closer to financial freedom where I no longer have to work at a job then yeah investing in the uh, stock market and doing the four percent rule doing the um, real estate stuff that's probably the most logical step and the problem that I'm facing now is I'm trying to do them all at the same time I'm trying to do creative stuff I'm trying to do real estate and I'm trying to do the whole uh, investment route as well and I could get really lucky and they could all take off or it could be really unfortunate and they could all be flushed down the toilet there's no way to know and that's part of playing the game of life but I know this for certain if I play it safe from now till the day of my retirement I will not be in a very good place and I want to retire at 45 I want to be done with the working world by the time I am 45 that gives me roughly uh, fifth, I'm going to call it 15 years it's a little over 15 it's like probably closer to 17 and of course like if I stick with my current company for 20 years I'll be 42 by the time the 20 year mark comes around and so but like if I could be done with it before then if I could just be done with it before then that would be amazing and then there's the other like the other part of this problem is when do I step away like I'm making good money at my job right now I'm respected at my job right now I feel like I'm doing good things and accomplishing good things and at what point in time does this creative adventure match that and at what point in time do I have to step away and a lot of people will say that you just when you know you know like when it's time to step away you'll know it's time to step away I'll turn this light on so you can see my beautiful face um, but when you know it's time to step away it becomes very obvious that it is in fact time to be like okay you only have time enough to do one of these things is it working or is it YouTube is it working or is it writing books is it working or is it you get the point and a lot of people say that when you get to that point you know you just know that it's time and um, so I'm hoping that it, it's obvious and I can be like okay I am in a good place with my creative adventures now I have a following my books are successful whenever I launch a book I know that I'm gonna get some good sales on it and so then at that point in time I'd be like all right I'm done I'm done with this and like going down the whole route of um, the uh, voice acting like who knows where that could go like I could get a couple of gigs and then the series that I'm voice acting for takes off and I'm now like the main character or some big deal and happen to go to comic cons and voice cons and con cons and con bonds and everybody's just like boom that then like I'm like okay like if the time requirement for me is greater than that in which my job can accommodate for then yeah I guess it would be time to step down and it's a weird thought now only because like working is all I've ever known I've always had some sort of steady job and so like stepping away from that feels very strange but like gosh how good would that feel to be able to just lean on yourself for your own finances and like the independence that comes from that as well like so many people underestimate the feeling of, of independence or the power of independence but like we have so very little of it 
a lot of people I was talking this morning about the downfall of um, physical medias and that like Best Buy and all these places announced that they're no longer going to carry physical movies or a disc of any kind as of Jan 1, 2024. And like it is baffling to me the amount of power retailers have over this world that we don't even register. Like what if the grocery store just said, all right, Jan 1, 2024, we're not carrying pork anymore. Like what would we do? What could we do to counteract grocery stores not carrying pork anymore? Like, yeah, there's pig farmers out there. There's people who are still raising, butchering, and doing what they do with pigs. But if the major people that are like selling those pigs or selling that product aren't buying it anymore, like how do you get pork? And maybe that's a dumb question. Maybe I'm a uh, city slicker who just doesn't understand how um, butchering and farming works. But I, I, it does scare me to think about the level of authority retail has over our lives. And like movies and stuff that's not that's non-essential non stuff so it's easy for people to kind of shove that under the rug and be like ah oh, it's not important and like i got i got streaming services i got x i got y i can watch it however i want to watch it and like you don't have to worry about storing dvds and movies and physical media is not trendy like or maybe it is trendy but it's not practical um i myself am someone who collects i buy as much physical media as i can get my hands on but i am not like the normal person in that regards most people are going to have their streaming services they're going to watch the movies when they want to watch them and then they're going to put them away and like even like i don't watch or i don't buy very many movies i don't watch very movie very many movies for that very reason like I've the what few movies I do have I don't often watch them all that much so it's like because that's a lot of people that are like I watch it once why do I need to watch it again or why do I need to own the movie and like there's always the exceptions to the rules where it's like, okay, this is a great movie. Like, I know I'm going to watch it a bajillion times. But then there's all of the other times where it's just a good enough movie to where you'll watch it a couple of times or whatever. And so... I get where people are coming from and that they don't um, they don't want to have all this physical media and it's more convenient and all that but like there's a lot of freedoms you give up when you don't own anything anymore and I think there's a lot of that that people are starting to see more more of nowadays but they still don't recognize it certainly not enough to make like a major change and like I said I don't especially in the world of movies and stuff I don't see home video sales ever making a comeback like some people are like oh it'll be just like vinyl and it'll come back and the whole world will love it and like vinyl made a comeback but i don't know that it is like everybody advertises it like it's such a big deal and like someone who's like been collecting music for a very long time i was collecting music when vinyl died and i could buy it for 20 cents and now it's back and they want 35 bucks for it and like for someone who understands and respects the medium like i don't feel like it's that big of a deal i think they capitalized on an audience of people who did not know the drawbacks or understand like why vinyl even went away and like so many of them are buying them without even players and it's just i don't know it seems backwards and it seems like the people who are investing in it aren't really like they're not gonna keep that genre or that medium alive for very long anyway i have officially pulled into my driveway i have exactly ninety thousand seven hundred miles on my car would you look at that um let's document that guys that's that's document worthy right there um but yeah this is definitely all i've got for you guys today i appreciate your time ever so much and until next we meet let's have a wonderful day